What's up, everyone? It's Roger here, FernDizKingdom.com, with an episode of the Diz Kingdom podcast. And we have joined by a special guest over there in sunny California. Sorry, not, and he's not in sunny California. That's what I was going to say. He is in sunny Florida. you got um, Ethan from MagicBandCollectors.com. So big thank you for joining us um, on this show today. No problem. Hi. All right. Um, Ethan, you might have noticed we kind of mentioned him quite a lot in our shows because he is our um, Patreon sponsor for the um, YouTube channel and stuff. So a big thank you to you personally for um, all your help in supporting the channel. No problem. No problem. Okay. And obviously we brought him on today basically to kind of give us a lot of information really on the magic bands um, and sort of over at Walt Disney World. Um, so I'm going to just basically throw this straight over to you and kind of maybe if you can give people a brief um, idea of what a magic band is and what it all is about. Sure. So I'll just start from the basics. Um, this is a magic band. And what they are is uh, a basically a band that goes on your wrist like this. And currently they're only available in Walt Disney World. So this is a technology that's only in Walt Disney World. And what they do is they take the place of your park ticket, your fast passes, your photo pass, um, even if you're staying in a resort, you can actually open your doors to your resort and be used as payment on the payment terminals uh, with a special PIN code that you choose. Yeah. And so uh, if you're staying at a resort, let's say you're staying at the Contemporary, uh, you will book your reservation and Disney will actually ship these to you for free with your resort reservation for everybody who's in your party. And they will ship you just a solid colored band like this. And there's red blue green yellow orange pink gray and you can't choose from purple yet if your resort stay but that may be coming in, in the future mm -hmm. so once you get these they'll have a they'll have your name on the back i'm not sure you can see <laughs> at all yeah. and uh it'll have a little number down there in the bottom and if you're staying in a resort they'll already be linked to your account uh on the my disney experience website um, but if you're not staying at a resort, you can actually buy these and you can buy them on DisneyStore.com or when you get to the parks and you use that little number on the back to link it into your account. And so uh, if you, what you'll do is you'll link these into your account and then you'll link your ticket that you purchased into your account and this will match up with your ticket and this will basically take the place of your ticket. Mm. And so you can, go ahead. I was going to say, I'm um, uh, just going to add um, for like international um, tourists, you actually get them when you get to the um, when you get to resort, you pick up the box there. They don't sort of ship them internationally. So that's right. what happened to me. But now I was just going to say, because you've definitely kind of, you know, because we've not known you for a while and stuff with all your magic bands and stuff. And I was just going to ask is how many do you actually own? <laughs> <laughs> so, how many I actually own is I, so not only do I have every single different kind of uh, graphic that they've created, which we'll go over the graphic ones in just a second, but I have all the graphic ones, but I also have a lot of prototypes because I know a number of cast members here who've kind of hooked me up with, with yeah. uh, the development process. So I would say I have 150 or so <laughs> yeah, different ones. And I, I would say probably about a third of those are ones that have never been released. Um, all right. Yeah, which are, which are the development ones, so... But I'll go. I'll go into that in, in just a second here. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those are kind of thing of like the, kind of the the appeal of, sort of what does appeal you to the what appealed you to collecting magic bands. So first of, first off, I own a software company, uh, SortedApps.com, and uh, so I'm I've always been into technology, and I I just thought it was cool that once Disney started making these magic bands and kind of implementing the technology, they have NFC in them, which is a, a short range wireless system that's used in a lot of mobile phones and things like that. And so once I saw that coming to the park, I thought, wow, that's, that's really, you know, cool. I, and I went and tried out the technology myself and you just touch your, the little Mickey head here, you just touch it to the thing and it lets you in the park. And it also has a battery inside of this that has long range sensors. So when you're on a ride, like let's say seven dwarfs mine train, it will know, who you are in your seat and when it takes a picture and then you can come home on your photo pass and there you are because of the long range sensors in the magic band. So the technology aspect of it is really cool to me. And, uh, you know, the, the normal colored ones, yay, you know, they're just a band, but <laughs> then they started adding, you know, graphics like stormtroopers and things like that. that and I'm really into Disney. My whole family is. And so once you take technology and Disney and, 
Star Wars and all the other things about Disney and you mix them up. It's like, you know, the perfect kind of thing. And and when I first started, I wasn't, you know, super into it, like I'm gonna make this website. But then they started coming out with limited editions of Darth Vader. And so I said, <laughs> okay, I've got to start collecting these things. And you know, if you get in on the ground floor at something and you start your collection, before you yeah. know it, you're you have one of the biggest collections in the world. So um they just kind of blew up from there. Do you collect all like the magic bandits and the sliders and all of the accessories that go with it or just the bands? So I do have that and I, I get those more for the website to take pictures and to make sure I'm up to speed with those. I don't really care about them either way, but now that I run the website, um, I really want to be kind of the place to go, the guy yeah. that knows everything about them. And I feel like if I'm going to do that, I need to, you know, have everything associated with it. So I, I try to stay on top of it. And I do the website. I don't make any money on the website. It's just purely for fun. And I like the feeling of knowing that if you have if you have a question about magic bands, just come to me and I'll help you out. Kind of yeah, I must admit, because it's the same thing for us, because we're like, it's like, I need to know something about a magic band. I know where to go. <laughs> it's just like... Um, because, you know, you see the odd ones coming up on the Disney store and stuff, and I'm like, well, is that new? Is that old? I'm never too, quite too yeah. sure. Um, I mean, it's just been a massive kind of exp expansion of doing it. Um, I was lucky enough to be out in um, Walt Disney World uh, about 2013. We went out for and we stayed on site. And I was like, please. And we, I'm like, please let us have them. Because I'd been hearing about them. And each resort was slowly being introduced. And it was like about two months before I went out, they kind of said, oh, you're back. Your place is like... I'm like, yeah. So if I, you know, we got there and we had the magic box, and you know, we were. My wife was a little bit like a uh, skeptic of being that organized with fast passes and stuff. Yeah. Once I started using the fast passes, and you know, we had the um, the quick service meals, and we were using the bands and for the hotel. She didn't like wearing them because she didn't want the, the tan line, but I was I was fine with it. <laughs> and it was one of those things of for us, you know, using the fast pass and getting on and off. It, you know, it was a bit of a novelty and stuff using it. And we, we, we enjoyed using them. It, it was a really good system, and it works really re well. And then, I'm going to be honest, we've been to Disneyland Paris a couple of times since then, and I'm going to be honest, we really, we, we, even my wife said, she said, oh, I wish they did the Magic Bands here, because it made the food system a lot easier rather than having vouchers. It, it mm -hmm. You know, having the, the fast passes rather than running around for pay. Once you use it, it's so they are so easy from the fundamental point of view. I mean, that was the thing I found with it. It was so much more useful. With, and booking your fast passes in, in, the, in advance and stuff, and having, you know, the photo pass and all of this, it just made it all so much more easier. Yeah, yeah. So to give you a little bit of my history to show you how I got into it was kind of similar to you actually. So uh, we just moved to Florida uh, three years ago. And before this, we moved in, we lived in Seattle and we would go to Disney World at least once a year. We'd go to Disneyland all the time. So I've been to Disneyland and Disney World multiple times before we even moved to Florida. When we moved to Florida, um, it was still in the testing phase, uh, similar to what you're talking about. And as a local with an annual pass, there was no way for us to get magic bands while they were in a testing phase because you had to be a resort guest. Mm -hmm. So uh, one day they said they're rolling out the testing to Art of Animation, the, the resort there. And uh, the tick, the uh, room there for one night was like 99 bucks for an annual pass holder. And I convinced my family, let's just go stay at the resort. <laughs> <laughs> and in the process, we got the magic bands. And so uh, once we had the magic bands, even as an annual pass holder, they then connected to our annual pass, even though they weren't giving them out to pass holders. At yeah. time. And so then we had magic bands and we were doing the fast pass plus and all that before anybody else was. And I, I really fell in love with the fast pass plus system. And I know a lot of people, especially the hardcore Disney people, a lot of Disneyland people are very much against, you know, magic bands, a fast pass. They're kind of traditionalists where they don't like change. And, um, but you're right. Once you use them, and you get used to them, and especially for me being a local, I can go on to the My Disney Experience, you know, yesterday or this morning. I can book three rides for this afternoon. I can go pick up my kids from school, and we can go and just walk right on the ride. There's no running to go get a paper yeah. fast pass or like anything like that. And and um, the and having them on your wrist means that people like my wife doesn't have to take her purse to the park. Yeah. You know, things like that. There's just, and they're also another thing too, is that they're waterproof. So here in, um, 
Disney World, we have two water parks, and you can just wear your magic band and bring your towel and go swim in the water, and you don't have to worry about you know your wallet or your keys or anything like that. I mean, you still do with your keys, I guess, to get to get in and out. Yeah, I must. I must admit, I think when we did the water parks, we did put them in our bags because we're like, we don't want to break them. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's. I think, like you said, there is that kind of thing of pre-organizing yourself for all your um your fast passes. But if you miss them, you can reorganize them all the rest of it. But I think once I got back into the thing of having to run and trying to time, you know, on when I had the paper ones, I yeah. never really was running between them all. And I think. Especially for like tourists like us are coming internationally, you know, you're planning a long time in advance and you want to make the most of it while you're there. Um, I do know like my friends, um, they went to Disney World last year and they were asking about the magic bands and, we, and I was trying to help them out with their fast pass and said, look, you know, don't waste it on the little rides, use it on the big ones if you if you're gonna if her husband's going on on his own don't bother wasting them on that and kind of thing and just you know they it was quite overwhelming at first but again you know i think they said you know that the fact that they're never having to queue for those big the big rides really made life a lot easier yeah it, de it definitely does and um the, you know like i said once you get used to it uh you really kind of don't want to go back yeah mm -hmm you realize the convenience of it. And I know a lot of people who, especially now, and I'll, this is probably a good segue to go into the graphic design ones, mm. especially now that you can get them personalized or you can get them with your favorite characters. I've heard a lot of people say, ah, I hate magic bands. I don't ever want a magic band, but then they come out with a chip and Dale magic band and then they go, okay, I got to buy this one. Even though I hate magic bands, <laughs> it's not my favorite character on it now. So now I'll give it a try. So, um, so let me get into the graphic magic. Yeah. Band. So, there's three main types of magic bands. There's, uh, well, I guess four now. There's open edition. There's limited release, limited edition, and there's magic band on demand. So let's just start with open edition. So open it. So what I'm talking about is graphic magic bands. These are magic bands that have graphics on them of your favorite character. This one here is Stormtrooper. Open editions are ones that are just sitting on the shelves for anybody to be able to just go and take off the shelf and link to your account, and they'll never run out. They're just going to keep making them and making them, at least for the foreseeable yeah. future. So <clears throat> this is an example of an open edition Magic Band. It's just got the number on the back, and you go buy it, and you link it to your account. It comes in a standard package. Then there's limited release Magic Bands, and a good example of that is this one here for uh, Run Disney. Yeah. Okay. And this is run Disney and it specifically says 2016 on it. So, you know, they're not going to make this in 2017 because yeah. it's 2016. So on the back, they have a thing that says limited release. And so they'll just make these for the year. And once they're done, they'll never make them again. And so five years from now, if you want this band, well, too bad. You're going to have to go on eBay or something. Um, the, so the, let me go back open edition. They just raised the prices. I think this is twenty two ninety nine U.S. dollars. Yikes. Uh, <laughs> uh, twenty. Yeah, they're they're getting pricey. Uh, twenty seven ninety nine for limited release. Solid color for non resort guests is twelve ninety nine, mm -hmm. uh, which is a lot better. And then finally, you have uh, limited edition. Okay, so limited edition come in these. Nice yeah. little fancy boxes. And these two are still available right now in the parks. Um, you can go buy them. I think the Star Wars one's at Watto's Grotto and Hollywood Studios. And the Valentine's Day is pretty much anywhere but Magic Kingdom, the Emporium. It's probably the best place to get it. So Star Wars, this one is Kylo Ren. And as you can see, it's got a limited edition of 2015. And so they only have 2015 once these are gone. That's it. They're gone forever. Now, the cool thing is not only are these bands limited edition, but uh, limited edition play special lights and sounds at entry points within the parks at your fast pass terminals. So usually when you're just using a regular green one or regular, even an open edition or limited release, you touch it and it just goes bling and the, the light turns green. Yeah. But with limited edition, this one, the Kylo Ren, at Hollywood Studios will make the Kylo Ren lightsaber sound. Ah. Yeah. 
So it's it's kind of a cool little feature. Some of the limited editions do it at the entry point. Some of them do it not just at the entry point, but also at all the fast pass terminals within that park that you bought it in. Yeah. So so this will do the lightsaber, Kylo Ren, and turn red. And a lot of cast members don't even know about what sounds they make. And so some of the cast members, when you touch the thing, they'll be like, wow, that's cool. I've never seen that before. Because only 2,000 people have these, you know. Yeah. So um, so uh, these cost thirty two ninety nine. Uh, so they're on the pricey side. Uh, and the, the lights and sounds are not advertised by Disney. So when they first come out, nobody really knows what sounds or lights they, they may do, if any. And so we kind of, as a community of Disney fans, have to go out and find out, and we take videos. And I post all the videos on my website of what uh, all the women edition do. The other one that I have here, Valentine's Day, this is a limited edition, 2,500. And um, this one does, uh, turns the, the turnstile pink and has a kissing sound. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> So there's all kinds of different limited edition ones that they kind of in the past they've come out with Darth Vader and you hear Darth Vader do his voice where, oh, or Yoda will do yeah. say a little Yoda thing. So it's really neat some of the some of the limited edition and they're my favorite ones and they're the ones that uh, most are most collectible for, yeah. for the majority of guests. They, they want that special kind of thing. And the neat thing is that these will make those lights and sounds two, three, four years from now. And that's when nobody has them and nobody's coming to the park with them. And they're kind of this, this, a lot of other guests look at the thing and go, wow, what, what just happened there? How did you do that? <laughs> well, I think that's the thing. Cause I mean, the, the price wise, I mean, I do remember when we were there and we were looking at all like the magic band bits and stuff and the, I can see like the kids and stuff wanting to have the, but I must, admit, I think the price of all of it, um, especially if you're in a group of, you know, a large group, it can, it can kind of get out of hand, but obviously everyone that goes, to the resorts get the basic version for free yeah. and you can sort of top up and stuff but it's cool to kind of sort of sort of see about the kind of those extra sounds and stuff yeah that that really um adds a little i mean so the price just went up three dollars per type like i was saying there yeah. like last week they used to be 19.99 24.99 29.99 and they just raised them three dollars and i think it's because that the graphic bands are doing really, really well on Disney World, and they're trying to milk it for as much profit. I, I read on the Disney Parks blog uh, just last week that they were doing a recap of all the top stories from 2015, and it said that magic bands are like the number one selling skew in mm. Walt Disney World. So I think that people really love the graphics. They love being able to personalize. They now have these magic band on-demand stations where, similar to the D-Tech, where you can create your own iPhone cases. Yeah. Now you can go through and you, on this little iPad type machine and you pick a design and you can put your last name or your first name on the uh, on the uh, whole side of the band here. So your name actually appears outside mm -hmm. and then you can pick whatever graphic you want here. And um, they cost even more. They're like 35 bucks. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, one thing. I mean, uh, one thing that um, for me that I found a lot of use with the infinite is with the in Disney Infinity is that you can use these user bands when you get home to access a special area on on the uh, for special toy boxes, and you also unlock a special toy. So it kind of ties in quite nicely with um, sort of Disney Infinity and stuff at home. I know they've been doing the same on the cruise line. So that's been a nice little bonus as well. Yeah, definitely. I think that. I mean, again, it comes into specifically with my love of technology. I love video games, I love Disney, and I love technology, and this is like the perfect like trifecta for me. I mean, I've got Disney Infinity, I've got every Disney Infinity character. So I've got all the Magic Bands too. <laughs> In fact, it's a, here's, a, here's a cruise line one right here. So if you can grab one of these cruise line ones, which are kind of difficult to get from the cruise because you have to have a child in the activity center. But if you can get one from your child or uh, convince somebody to get one for you somehow from a cruise, you can take this one home and put it on the base, and you can find them on eBay, but they're kind of expensive. And you'll get that Disney Infinity content at home in your Disney Infinity game, and that's really neat. And then, of course, you know about this one. I've told you this. Before. Oh yes, the Hawaii one. Yeah. So here's a an Alani one from you know it's got Stitch on there, and uh, it says in the game Alani uh, content unlocked. I think that there's probably some kind of future content possible. 
Wow. Yeah, I'm a, uh, this week I just managed to get the I got a web code for the um, the <laughs> launch bay area, and it kind of brings up a special zone within oh. that same thing. So it kind of brings it up the same as the Hawaii area and the um, thing. So they've got, they've gone down the web route for the um, the launch bay stuff. But the one quick um, quick thing that came up last week about Magic Bands was this news of. Shanghai, apparently, um, they're not going to be using them in the Shanghai Resort because they're going to be using your mobile phone stuff. And I thought, I thought, well, I'll just ask your opinion on sort of, you know, are you, were you surprised by that or were you expecting it? Well, I was a little bit surprised. Uh, I had heard a lot of rumbling that uh, Magic Bands may be coming to Hong Kong, the Hong Kong Disneyland. Um, so I thought, well, Shanghai would be a perfect place to roll it out. But um, there may be some logistics involved there that, that make it a little bit more difficult. Um, their, their main production, uh, the Magic Bands are created in China, but they're produced here in Tampa Bay. They're like designed here in Tampa Bay. And I don't know how the Chinese culture will take to doing things on your, on your wrist. There may be cultural differences. Yeah. There may be cost differences. I think one of the big things one of the big reasons that magic bands work in Disney world is because of how vast Disney world is. It's like its own city. It's yeah. like, I mean, area wise, Disney world is the size of San Francisco. So you've got 30 resorts and four theme parks and two water parks. And, and you're as a guest, you're booking your stay here for a week, a week and a half. Yeah. And that whole time you're staying inside the Disney world and you're taking the monorail here and going to eat here. And it's all within Disney world. So, the Magic Bands make sense as, like, your, basically your wallet. But in some place like Shanghai, which currently is a much smaller area, maybe they're waiting for an expansion to add that in. Or maybe they're just testing some mobile phone things out to see how well they take off um, and, and maybe roll some of those features out in the U.S. and maybe they don't. And maybe that, you know, because there are problems with mobile phones with, like, battery life going mm -hmm. down. Um, people don't like pulling out their phones all the time. To, I mean, people are already pulling out their phones to do fast passes and everything. I just can't imagine them doing that for everything. And how does mobile payments work? And how does, mm. uh, you know, some of the other things, room key to your hotel room and stuff like that. I, I don't know. I must admit, when we were on vacation, it's like I want to put my phone and put it in the, lock it in the safe. And, yeah. I want, and I want to disconnect for the day. That's literally my kind of thing. If I'm on a vacation, I don't want some time away from Facebook and Twitter. And, you know, yeah, it's, you know, I know people like doing it, but for me, it's just kind of quite nice to disconnect. So I don't didn't really like that side of things. Yeah, but I didn't know as well was because of like like the wording they were using was like I think the technology has moved forward so much since they started developing the bands mm -hmm. that you know, when they started apparently developing uh, Magic Bands, the iPhone wasn't even out. Yeah. So it was it was the technology moved so much quicker than maybe the magic band sort of how long it took. But I can't see it going for mag from Walt Disney World for a long time yet. No, no, yeah. D Disney World will have magic bands for at least the next decade, in my opinion. And and you know, there are I th I think Shanghai is really a test. I think that they're going to be saying, Okay, let's do this without magic bands with mobile phones and let's see how it works and let's let's um because it's an international Chinese location, they're not going to upset a lot of hardcore Disney fans because China doesn't have a lot of hardcore Disney fans yeah. yet. So it's easy for them, instead of going to Disneyland and totally changing everything, to do it in yeah. some new park. They can test their, their ideas. If it doesn't work, they can switch them around. Thing like Disney World, like I said, the water parks, these things are waterproof. You can't yeah. take your phone into the water. You know, So there, there are advantages to Magic Bands, even if phones were to ever take over. So... They may do like a mix of them. I, I don't know. We'll, we'll just have yeah. to see. Like it's definitely, that. definitely an interesting thing. But I was just going to ask also on um, what, what you mentioned Disney Infinity, but what else do you kind of collect Disney wise? Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I've got everything. I've got like, I've got the like, I mean, I've got the Star Wars oh, the know, boundary, yeah. boxes. I've got uh, video games. I've got, I mean, here's like, I've got a pin set here, like a yeah. frame pin set. I've got, uh, vinyl records. I mean, I, I everything. Yeah. yeah. So. Right across, but yeah, it's, it's cool. It's just this kind of thing. It's just like you know, just that thing of trying to get to kind of to know kind of what you're into and stuff. Because the plan is for Ethan is to join um, us for a number of oh zoom zooms. Yeah, there's yeah. plenty of zoom zooms. It's that thing. It's, it's like trying to find space for all this stuff to go. Yeah. <laughs> 
it's like and you, and you get to that certain point it's like no the room's actually starting to explode i need to kind of work out what i want and stuff yeah. <laughs> but like I said, I just wanted to kind of, when I get Ethan on to do kind of talk about the magic bands and also kind of, he's probably joining us in for odd episodes here and there. I'm going forward and kind of giving us a little bit of extra help on some of the um, the Walt Disney World side of things and talking about collectibles and stuff. But anything else you wanted to add on that, Ethan, for this episode? Um, one more thing with magic bands, yep. if we can jump right into here. I've got one left that I wanted to kind of show. So, um, not only are there magic bands that you can buy, but there's some that you can't buy. And some of the ones that you can't buy are, um, are given out at special events. So uh, a good example is D23, which is a Disney fan club, yeah. at a, uh, an event called Destination D in 2014 at the Contemporary Hotel here in Disney World. And as a gift to everybody who bought a ticket, they got a free special Destination D magic band that was only released for that thing. And so those are kinds of little extras and hard to find collectibles mm -hmm. that people can get with magic bands. Here's one that's an interesting one. It's a new one. It's a Disney Alumni Association college program. So if you were ever a cast member that was in the college program, they had an alumni event mm -hmm. and they gave these out to all the people who attended the event. So there are kind of events here and there that, that randomly will have these special bands and they don't do any special lights and sounds, but they're yeah. definitely collectible so. i suppose as well with the, the printing cost now they've kind of got it in running oh yeah the cost have come down so much yeah they're good freebies they're good giveaways and they're yeah, that's cool. but anyway i uh, just like i said just like to thank ethan for um not only being on the show but also his um continuous support through um patreon as well um so big thank you to so this is where i usually go eat big thank you to ethan at sort of <laughs> apps.com it's quite funny because we were having this discussion with abs yes, um when we were recording yesterday and we go like the literally we just got so used to sort of saying it and doing it like yep yeah, that's it that's cool but yeah and um, you can check us out on um this kingdom.com and you can also check out ethan at magic band collectors.com and sort of apps.com as well and you can also hit subscribe on this channel and if you're listening to the podcast versions where well, you can hit um subscribe there and also leave us for a review so Big thank you for Ethan for joining me on this episode. And big, it was really cool. Kind of great to start to speak to you in person and just kind of get to know yeah. you a little bit more and kind of dealing with like um, magic band stuff because it is such a kind of a cool little area. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I've, like you said, I've got lots of other collectibles. So, <laughs> so yeah, big thank you for listening. And we shall see you all guys in a later episode. Laters. Laters, guys. <laughs>